Hello, I'm Faye and today I have a really interesting mix of books that I hauled within the last two months. These have been very much inspired by my desire to read more books from all across the world, the Leipzig book fair that I went to with my friend Anna and general book recommendations that come flooding in all the time. So get buckled in um, for quite a lot of translated fiction and a few, a few English books that might make you chuckle. The first that I have is Die Vögel, or in English translation, The Birds, um, or in uh, Norwegian, Fuglan, Fuglane, I do not know how to pronounce that. Um, the author Tade Vessas published this book in 1957, in which we follow Mattis, um, an adult with some form of mental disorder who lives with his older sister, Hege, I think and his life suddenly drastically changes when she falls in love one day um this just sort of from how it's blurbed and described promises to have a lot of nature writing elements in it and a sort of very sparse but beautiful writing um this edition even mentions the translator on the cover, which is Hinrich Schmidt Henke, who translates from, I looked him up, French, Norwegian and Italian to German, which how cool are you if you are able to do that? Um, so I got this book, it's still in the plastic wrapping because I've not wanted to tarnish it, as well as Das Mädchen auf der Himmelsbrücke from the same publisher, Gugot's uh, publisher, is it? German publishing house that was funded in 2014. The second, um, Das Mädchen auf der Himmelsbrücke, I did look up what the English translation is, Girl Upon Heaven's Pier, um, is a Finnish short novel, originally published in 1951, with um, apparently really strong auto-fictional elements. The author, um, Eva Lisa Mana, also grew up with her grandparents, as does the young girl who we follow here. It's set in a small town that now belongs to Russia, um, was, was lost to the Soviet Union, um, but as the story is told, it is still Finland. So this was translated from Finnish by Maximilian Moorman, um, who apparently also translates from Finnish and Estonian into German, which again, one language is not enough, apparently. Um, translators doing great stuff. Yeah, the Gugwald's, um publishing house translates sort of forgotten great works of fiction from North northern and, and European uh, Eastern European countries um, and I just think they are aesthetically so pleasing I got these both in hardback which is rare for me but they had a stand on the Leipzig book fair and um, that just like marked a nice moment to remember to be honest another translated book that I got is Pauline Armage uh, the German translation is Ich muss darüber sprechen. The French um, title I also wrote down uh, it was Avorté une histoire intime de l'IVG. I do not know. This was written in 2022. And in this, um, Pauline Amage, French woman, talks about her abortion, which I just think is really interesting because not too long ago, I read Annie Arnaud's, um, again, French, um, short um, recollection of her abortion when she was a younger woman, uh, the English translation of that is happening. And um, I, li I like the parallels, a sort of like similar format in book now from like a, a, a modern, current, um, French writer 
Um, and I also wrote, I read I Hate Men, which I think was published two, two maybe three years ago by Pauline Amarge. Um, so she does have some sort of strong, um, not always that easily digestible opinions um, in her feminist writings, but I liked how it was written. Um, that book was basically published exactly that, like to look the same, but it was purple, not green. Um, so we have a French author that I am really intrigued by. Then, not translated, and the last book, no, I got two more books in Leipzig um, on my short trip there. I got a Valerie Fritsch Herzklappen von Johnson and Johnson. This hasn't been translated into English yet, I believe. She's an Austrian author who has the audacity to be as old as I am and be a published author. So that, yeah, I always, yeah, I'm just, <sighs> jealousy is not a good look. In this book, she talks about Alma and Alma has a son who can't feel pain. Mm, and in this, she talks about the, the parents and especially Alma, the mother's um, way of dealing with that as well as her relationship with her grandmother, who slowly opens up and talks about her traumatic past. This was totally like a, a, a random buy in the sort of bookshop that was at the book fair, uh, because the um, spotlight country at the Leipzig book fair in Germany this year was Austria. Uh, so I thought I would pick up a book that tickled my fancy by an Austrian author and this one was it. And then finally in one of my favourite bookshops in Leipzig, um, Rota Books, I got Undrowned Black Feminist Lessons from Marine Mammals by Alexis Pauline Gums, which is a bit of a bit of a random pick. This was published 2020 and apparently the sort of structure of this follows like eight meditations on writings on, on, on marine life, sea creatures and how that can sort of get you, have, how you can use that as an, Met a metaphor for slavery, I believe. Um, the author, I've, I've never read anything by Alexis Pauline Gums, but I did look her up for the sake of talking about this um, haul. And she sounds like a really interesting woman. She's American, um, a writer, an independent scholar, which as someone who is currently working at a university is always a concept that intrigues me. Um, she she's also an activist and educator. I don't know. She sounds really interesting, and I did get this one slightly inspired by another book that I hauled um, this month. Um, this, these are the most more recent picks. I got Pod by Pauline uh, Laline Paul that way around, um, which is a novel about. A dolphin. A protagonist is a dolphin. This book has been shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction, which um, the winner will be announced in June. And the reactions all across YouTube when this was announced as one of the f five, six, five books on the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist were hilarious. The major, I feel like the majority really dislikes this book. And then there are a few people who are really championing it and um, think it was excellent. I think the concept is cool. I'm I'm fine with having um, anthropomorphized animals as the main characters in a book I read. I expect this to touch heavily on like themes around climate change if we're following like sea animals and a dolphin. Um, but yeah, mainly I just want to read this so I can, so I know what the, the, the buzz is about and why people hate or love this book. And then the final two books that I got are Bear Woman by Carolina Ramquist, again, 
a translated book. Um, our, our subtitle is A Memoir of Myth, Motherhood and Hidden History. And um, in this book, which was published in 2019, I believe, the Swedish author Ramqvist writes a novel that seems to like blur the lines between fiction and non-fiction writing because in this um, our protagonist is a writer who becomes obsessed with the story of Marguerite de la Roque, that was her name, um, a young French noblewoman who in the 16th century, I think, um, gets abandoned on a totally remote little island somewhere in Nova Scotia. She's pregnant. Um, the I think she, I think she's abandoned together with who's supposed to be her lover and a, a, another friend. They they die, but she survives in the wilderness. And the writer, who is our protagonist, gets sort of yeah obsessed with researching her story, finding out more about her. And this really fits with um, a type of book, I guess, that has become more and more popular singing the unsung songs of women in history and I think that's a really interesting concept. It did remind me, just because of the tagline that motherhood plays a role in this, um, it reminded me of another book that I read not too long ago, A Line of the Sky, there's no blanking on the title, but in that, the, which is non-fiction, the author also gets slightly obsessed with female female mountain climbers and how that <laughs> um meshes or doesn't go with a role as a mother so i think it is really interesting having this structure of a present day woman getting sucked into the life of a woman in history and drawing parallels between them. I think that's a really interesting way of commenting on how societal expectations towards mothers have changed and how sometimes they really don't change. Um, so I'm really intrigued by this one. I hadn't heard of it at all. I just think the cover is great. I like the title and um, it was calling out to me in the bookshop. And then finally, one that I did very much have on my list to check out as soon as it was published in a different format. It's People Person by Candice Carty Williams. Um, this was out for a long time on this, like, is that what you call trade paperback? This large format, which I really hate. Now it's out in a normal, nice paperback uh, version. Uh, Candice Carty Williams, you may have heard of because she is the author of Queenie, which is a book set in London about Queenie, who sort of um, stumbles and trips through life after a relationship going going sour and she's a pretty unhappy person. But I thought that book was really engagingly written and uh, funny without being self-deprecating and uplifting without being cheesy. I don't know, I just thought the nuance in Queenie was excellent. In People Person, the next novel that Candy Curtis Williams has written, we follow five half siblings, probably also growing up in the UK, just by what I sort of expect this author to write about, who have never really had much in common, shared their lives with each other, and something, I don't know what, and I don't really want to know, forces them to reconnect. Um, they, I think they all share a father who again is a bit of an elusive character in all of their lives and I'm expecting this to be a sort of good troubled family, families novel. Like it's like a niche storyline or maybe just a trope, like difficult families that I really don't have time for. Like usually I get annoyed and just think either talk with each other or choose not to, but sort of sitting around a dinner table with all these unspoken secrets and resentments just bugs me. So I am really hopeful 
that Candice Carty Williams has done something different with this trope. I've also managed not to hear too much about this, as popular as Queenie was. I feel like this may have been the not as successful sort of second novel by an author, which is always a bit difficult to get right. Um, so I am really quite curious about this one. Um, so yeah, I, I think I really got a really interesting mix of books in the last few weeks. Let me tell me that way around. Let me tell you. I can tell you that I'm really quite intrigued by all of these. You tell me if you've read any of these, um, which ones sound interesting to you, and I'll see you very soon. Bye! Thank you.